In the grand tapestry of human civilization, no thread runs quite as vibrant or as intricate as that of China's ancient dynasties. Today, we delve into the vibrant hues of the Shang Dynasty, a realm of bronze and bone, where oracle scripts whispered of the future and kings ruled with divine mandate. Di Xin, born in 1105 BC. The tale of the Shang Dynasty is incomplete without the mention of King Zhou, a name that echoes through the annals of history. This was a man who, in the early days of his reign, was known for his wisdom and benevolence. His decisions were guided by the welfare of his people, and his rule brought prosperity and peace to the Shang Dynasty. The people loved and respected him, their hearts filled with admiration for their wise and benevolent king. In his early reign, King Zhou was indeed a beacon of wisdom and benevolence, his rule a golden era of prosperity and peace in the Shang Dynasty. Sima Qian, a prominent Chinese historian, gives us a vivid account of King Zhou's early reign in his historical records. According to Sima Qian's writings, King Zhou was a ruler with a vision, a leader whose every decision was made with the welfare of his subjects in mind. He was known for his wisdom, and his reign brought prosperity and peace to the Shang Dynasty. His benevolent rule was a beacon of hope for the people, a golden era that they would remember for generations to come. Sima Qian's records serve as a testament to King Zhou's wisdom and benevolence, painting a vivid picture of his rule as a time of prosperity and peace. As the narrative unfolds, we delve deeper into the reign of King Zhou, focusing on his later years. The once benevolent and wise ruler, as per Sima Qian's records, began to change. As time passed, King Zhou became increasingly indulgent and detached from his duties. His thirst for power, luxury and entertainment overshadowed his responsibilities towards his kingdom and people. The king's palace turned from a beacon of hope into a symbol of decadence. His obsession with his consort Daji, known for her beauty and manipulative nature, further accelerated his downfall. King Zhou's infatuation led to a shift in his priorities and his rule was marked by tyranny and extravagance. This period of his reign saw the Shang Dynasty's prosperity dwindle as his subjects lived in fear and despair. The golden era of peace and prosperity, as remembered by the people, was replaced by a reign of terror and oppression. This stark contrast in King Zhou's rule serves as a reminder of how power and luxury can corrupt even the wisest and benevolent of leaders. As the tale of King Zhou continues, we delve into an even darker chapter of his rule. King Zhou's obsession with Daji didn't just lead to moral decadence, but it also gave rise to a reign of terror. The king, under Daji's influence, began to impose cruel and inhumane punishments on his subjects. The once wise and just ruler was now a tyrant, feared by his own people. Among the many torturous methods employed during his rule, the infamous cannon-burning punishment stands out. This horrendous method involved encasing victims in a hollow cannon filled with burning charcoal. This cruel act was not just a punishment, but a spectacle of fear and dominance, often carried out in public view. King Zhou's reign of terror led to widespread fear and resentment among the people. His subjects, who once revered him, now lived in constant dread of his unpredictable wrath. The once prosperous kingdom, was now a land of despair and suffering. King Zhou's cruel punishments marked the beginning of the end for the Shang Dynasty. His reign, initially marked by wisdom and justice, had transformed into a period of terror and oppression. This grim chapter in the dynasty's history serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of obsession and the dehumanizing effects of unchecked authority. As King Zhou's rule spiraled further into tyranny and decadence, he embarked on a project of grandiose proportions that would become a symbol of his rule's excesses. In a display of extravagance unlike anything seen before, King Zhou ordered the construction of the Alcohol Lake and the Deer Terrace Pavilion. The Alcohol Lake was no ordinary body of water. It was a vast pool filled to the brim with wine, a testament to the king's insatiable indulgence. Surrounding this lake was a forest, but not one of trees and foliage a meat forest where cuts of meat were hung from structures resembling tree branches. He did this inside Deer Terrace Pavilion, which cost a lot of money to build and led the economy of Shang Dynasty fall. These constructions were not just wasteful extravagances, 
they were a blatant show of disregard for the welfare of his people. As his subjects starved and suffered, King Zhou reveled in his excesses. His people's despair was starkly contrasted by his indulgent feasts in the Deer Terrace Pavilion, where he would dine on the finest meats amidst his lake of wine. The Alcohol Lake and Deer Terrace Pavilion in all their grandeur and wastefulness stand as enduring symbols of King Zhou's decadence. They marked not only the peak of his moral decline, but also the beginning of the downfall of the Shang Dynasty. These structures, born out of unchecked power and obsession, serve as a grim reminder of the ruinous consequences of a leader's disregard for his people. As the Shang Dynasty crumbled under King Zhou's tyranny, a new power was rising in the form of the Zhou people, led by Gugong Danfu. Unlike the extravagant and indulgent King Zhou, Gugong Danfu was a man of simplicity and discipline. His leadership was based on principles of frugality, righteousness, and respect for the welfare of his people. While King Zhou reveled in his Grand Alcohol Lake and Deer Terrace Pavilion, Gugong Danfu and the Zhou people led an ascetic lifestyle. They believed in modest living and hard work, values that resonated with the common folk who had been suffering under King Zhou's rule. This stark contrast between the decadence of the Shang Dynasty and the ascetic lifestyle of the Zhou people only served to further elevate Gugong Danfu's standing among the people. Under Gugong Danfu's leadership, the Zhou people started gaining influence and power. Their simple yet principled lifestyle began attracting more followers, and their numbers grew. Danfu's reputation as a wise and just leader spread far and wide, making the Zhou people a formidable force to reckon with. Gugong Danfu's leadership and the rise of the Zhou people marked the beginning of a new era. It set the stage for the eventual fall of the Shang Dynasty and the rise of the Zhou Dynasty. As King Zhou's rule was marked by decadence and disregard for his people, Gugong Danfu's reign was a beacon of hope, promising a better future. This was a pivotal moment in history, a turning point that spelled doom for the Shang Dynasty and gave birth to the era of the Zhou people. Following the leadership of Gugong Danfu, his son Jili ascended to power, continuing the rise of the Zhou people. Jili, like his father, was a man of strong principles. He upheld the values of frugality, righteousness, and respect for the welfare of his people. His reign was marked by his commitment to these principles, which further attracted the common folk and enhanced the influence of the Zhou people. Under Jili's rule, the Zhou people continued to gain power and influence, further weakening the Shang Dynasty. Jili, through his determined leadership and adherence to his father's principles, was able to consolidate the gains made by his father and strengthen the position of the Zhou people. His reign was not marked by grand structures or indulgent lifestyles, but by the steady growth of a people committed to frugality, hard work, and righteousness. However, Jili's reign was not just about maintaining the status quo, it was about setting the stage for a greater change. His rule was a stepping stone towards the final overthrow of the Shang Dynasty by his son and grandson, King Wen and King Wu. Jili's reign, though less extravagant than that of the Shang kings, was a crucial chapter in the rise of the Zhou Dynasty. It paved the way for the final overthrow of the Shang Dynasty and the establishment of the Zhou Dynasty. As we delve further into the history of the Zhou people, we realize that Jili's reign was not just a continuation of his father's legacy, but a strategic move towards a greater goal. His reign was a testament to the power of principles and the strength of a people united under a common cause. As the Shang Dynasty crumbled under its own weight, the Zhou people, under the leadership of Jili, continued to rise, setting the stage for a new era in Chinese history. But unfortunately, Jili was killed by the King of Shang. After the untimely demise of Jili, his son, King Wen, took the reins, continuing the upward trajectory of the Zhou people. Known for his wisdom and benevolence, King Wen was a beacon of hope and a symbol of change for the Zhou people. His reign was marked by strategic decisions that strengthened the Zhou people's position and further weakened the Shang Dynasty. King Wen's rule was not just about power and influence, but about the welfare of his people. He implemented policies that promoted agriculture, trade, and culture, leading to the prosperity of the Zhou people. 
his wisdom and benevolence attracted more people to his realm, further expanding the influence and power of the Zhou people. His reign was not just about the present, but about the future. He was a visionary who saw the bigger picture. King Wen knew that the Shang dynasty was on the brink of collapse. He used this opportunity to strategize and set the stage for the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty. King Wen's rule was a testament to the power of wisdom and benevolence. His rule was not just about power and influence, but about the welfare and prosperity of his people. Under King Wen's rule, the Zhou people gained even more power and influence, further weakening the Shang dynasty. His reign set the stage for the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty by his son, King Wu. As the Shang dynasty crumbled under its own weight, the Zhou people, under the leadership of King Wen, continued to rise, setting the stage for a new era in Chinese history. King Wen's reign was a crucial chapter in the rise of the Zhou dynasty. It paved the way for the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty and the establishment of the Zhou dynasty. His reign was a testament to the power of wisdom, benevolence, and strategic leadership. As we delve further into the history of the Zhou people, we realize that King Wen's reign was not just a continuation of his father's legacy, but a strategic move towards a greater goal. As the Zhou people's power and influence continued to grow under King Wen's leadership, King Zhou of Shang began to feel threatened and took drastic measures. His fear and insecurity led him to capture King Wen, viewing him as a significant threat to his rule. This move, however, was not without consequence. News of King Wen's capture spread like wildfire among the Zhou people, sparking outrage and rebellion. This event served as a catalyst, intensifying the struggle between the Shang and Zhou dynasties. The Zhou people, who had been growing stronger and more influential under King Wen's wise and benevolent rule, were now fueled by a new motive, to free their beloved leader. The capture of King Wen was more than just a power move by King Zhou of Shang. It was a pivotal moment in the history of these two dynasties, marking a turning point in their struggle for power. The event shook the Zhou people, but it also strengthened their resolve and united them even more. King Wen's capture, while a setback, was also a catalyst for change. It rallied the Zhou people and set the stage for the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty. The events that followed this capture would forever change the course of Chinese history, leading to the rise of the Zhou dynasty and the fall of the Shang dynasty. The capture of King Wen by King Zhou of Shang was a pivotal moment in the history of these two dynasties, setting the stage for the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty. The Zhou people's reaction to their leader's capture was a testament to their unity and resolve, characteristics that would play a crucial role in their eventual victory over the Shang dynasty. As the Zhou people reeled from the capture of their beloved leader, King Wen, they also faced a critical decision, the relocation of their capital city. King Wen, before his capture, had made a strategic move to shift the capital city to a location well fortified and strategically advantageous. King Wen, a visionary leader, understood the importance of a strong, strategic base. The new location, nestled between two rivers, offered natural defense and was easily accessible for trade routes. This move was more than just a change of scenery. It was a strategic maneuver designed to consolidate the Zhou people's power and secure their future. The relocation served multiple purposes. Not only did it provide a stronger defense against the Shang dynasty, but it also allowed the Zhou people to expand their influence and establish a more robust trade network. This move, though it took place under the shadow of King Wen's capture, was a significant step towards the rise of the Zhou dynasty. The shift of the capital city was a testament to King Wen's foresight and strategic acumen. Even in his absence, his decisions continued to guide the Zhou people, setting them on a path that would eventually lead to the overthrow of the Shang dynasty. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of this historical period, it is clear that King Wen's capture was not the end but rather a catalyst for a series of strategic moves that would forever change the course of Chinese history. 
In the next scene, we'll witness the resolve of the Zhou people in action as they rally to free their leader and further solidify their power. Stay tuned for more. Under the rule of King Wen, even in his absence, the Zhou dynasty began to flourish. The strategic relocation of the capital city acted as a catalyst, setting the stage for a series of events that would forever change the course of history. Despite the capture of their leader, the Zhou people were not disheartened. Instead, they rallied together, their resolve stronger than ever. With the new capital city serving as a strong base, the Zhou dynasty started to expand, gaining more territory and influence. King Wen's strategic decisions, made before his capture, were now bearing fruit. The Zhou people, guided by their leader's foresight, were making strides, slowly but surely chipping away at the might of the Shang dynasty. As the influence of the Zhou dynasty grew, the Shang dynasty began to wane. The balance of power was slowly but surely shifting. The Zhou dynasty's expansion not only led to more territory and an increased influence, but it also created a sense of instability within the Shang dynasty. The Shang rulers, once feared and respected, were now facing a formidable adversary in the Zhou people, an adversary that was growing stronger with each passing day. With each new territory they conquered, each new trade route they established, the Zhou dynasty was slowly setting the stage for the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty. King Wen's reign, even in his absence, marked a period of expansion for the Zhou dynasty, a period that would eventually lead to the end of the Shang dynasty. First, Zhou conquered Northwest, the Quanrongs, then conquered the Westerns, including Mixu, Yuan, Gong, and some small kingdoms around Shang dynasty. At last, the Zhou people conquered the Easterns, including Li, Yu, and Chong, threatened the important city of Shang dynasty, Zhao Ge. Following in the footsteps of his father, King Wen, the reign of King Wu marked the beginning of a new era for the Zhou dynasty. Ascending to power with a vision of a more prosperous and united kingdom, King Wu held strong to the values of frugality, righteousness, and a deep respect for the welfare of his people. His reign was characterized by a series of strategic moves that further extended the reach of the Zhou dynasty. King Wu, unlike his father, chose to confront the Shang dynasty directly. He rallied his people and led them into battle with a resolve that was reflective of his strong leadership. His strategic acumen and prowess in battle led to a series of victories that further weakened the Shang dynasty, paving the way for the end of their reign. King Wu's reign saw more than just strategic governance and expansion. As the sun rose over the horizon, casting a golden hue over the resolute faces of his men, King Wu was found observing the troops of Meng Jin. A crucial part of his strategy, this observation was not just a simple act of inspection. It was an assertion of his leadership, a testament to his meticulousness, and a reflection of his readiness for the inevitable conflict with the Shang dynasty. The troops of Meng Jin were not just soldiers, they were the backbone of the Zhou dynasty's military might. Their strength and discipline were honed under the watchful eyes of King Wu, who ensured that every soldier was prepared for the impending battle. The clanging of weapons being sharpened, the rhythmic stomping of feet during drills, and the focused expressions on the faces of the soldiers, all under the observant gaze of King Wu, painted a picture of a kingdom ready to defend its honor. This strengthening of the Zhou dynasty's military might was not just a show of force. It was a strategic move, one that was aimed at intimidating the Shang dynasty and sending a clear message. The Zhou dynasty was ready for war. King Wu's observation of the Meng Jin troops marked a significant step towards the final overthrow of the Shang dynasty. As the sun set, the troops of Meng Jin stood tall and proud, their spirits high and their resolve unyielding, mirroring the determination of their leader, King Wu. As the dawn broke, the air was filled with a palpable tension. The stage was set for the final confrontation between the Shang and Zhou dynasties. The Battle of Mu Ye, a clash destined to change the course of history. King Wu, with his strategic planning and leadership, led the Zhou troops to face the mighty Shang forces. His observation of the Meng Jin troops was not in vain. Their discipline, strength, and readiness were evident on the battlefield. 
In 1046 BC, under his command, the 40,000 Zhou forces executed their strategies flawlessly, defeated 100,000 Shang forces grouped by slaves and prisoner of war, causing the remaining Shang forces to retreat. In the midst of the chaos, King Zhou of Shang found himself cornered. His reign, which was marked by cruelty and excess, was about to end. In a final act of defiance, he set his palace on fire, preferring to die than to surrender. His death marked the end of the Shang dynasty and the beginning of the Zhou dynasty. The flames that engulfed King Zhou's palace were a symbol of his downfall and the rise of a new era. The Battle of Mu Ye was not just a testament to King Wu's strategic prowess, but also to the resilience of the Zhou people. They had endured the tyranny of King Zhou of Shang, and now they emerged victorious and ready to usher in a new era of prosperity under the rule of the Zhou dynasty. As the sun set, the battlefield of Mu Ye bore witness to a historic event. The death of King Zhou of Shang and the victory of the Zhou dynasty marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. The Zhou dynasty had risen from the ashes of the Shang dynasty, ready to carve its name into the annals of history. In the rise and fall of dynasties, the shifting sands of time and the indomitable spirit of humanity, we find the echoes of our past and lessons for our future. The Shang and Zhou dynasties, each remarkable in their own right, offer a unique perspective into the ebb and flow of power and the enduring resilience of humanity. The Shang dynasty, marked by the vibrant hues of its early years and the tumultuous reign of King Zhou, teaches us the perils of unchecked power and excess. It serves as a stark reminder that a leader's actions can either uplift or undermine the very foundations of a society. On the other hand, the rise of the Zhou dynasty under the leadership of King Wu offers a narrative of resilience, strategic genius, and the power of unity. It stands as a testament to the strength and spirit of the Zhou people, who, despite the odds, emerged victorious, ushering in a new era of prosperity. These events, while set in the distant past, continue to shape the course of Chinese history. The enduring legacy of these ancient dynasties can be seen in the cultural, philosophical, and political landscape of China today. Their stories, etched in time, serve as a mirror reflecting the triumphs and trials of humanity. As we close this chapter of history, we are reminded of the timeless lessons of leadership, power, and the human spirit. The rise and fall of King Zhou and the shifting dynasties are not just tales of the past, but echoes of the future. Their stories remind us that in the face of adversity, humanity has the power to shape its destiny, a lesson as relevant today as it was over a thousand years ago. As we close, remember to leave a comment, like and share this video, and subscribe to our channel. Your support enables us to continue creating content like this. We appreciate your engagement. Goodbye and see you in our next video.